So for this week on Cyber School, we're covering SIP and Informacast. Informacast has really been kind of a hot subject for a lot of our most recent cyber schools, and I just kind of wanted to continue the trend. Um, one of the big things that we interface and we get a lot of questions with with Informacast is how do you do some kind of a SIP setup with Informacast? Um, generally, most of our products, you know, say like our IP66 Horn, award-winning from SingleWire, or one of our talkback speakers, you can register them with Informacast and they can play broadcast normally. But for things like intercoms, you know, you kind of have to think about, okay, you know, I can have my intercom receive broadcasts and notifications from Informacast, but how do I use the actual intercom and what is the right way to do it? So hopefully with today's video, you'll have a bit better understanding about how to use SIP and Informacast together. So with SIP and Informacast, generally the way that almost everybody has done it, you know, since Informacast came out, was register the device with a dedicated SIP server. 95% of the time it's Cisco Unified Call Manager, sometimes called Cisco Call Manager, CUCM, there's a whole bunch of abbreviations and a whole bunch of ways to refer to it. But that has kind of been the main way to do it just because these two products were so ingrained with each other. You know, if you were doing anything with Informacast, it was reasonable to suspect that you were also using a Cisco Unified Call Manager system to actually handle your phone calls. So that became a really big way to do it with very recent updates in the last year and a half or so. You can use other dedicated SIP servers um, with the new version of Informacast, Informacast Fusion. We're not really gonna be covering that as much today, but generally you would either register it directly with some kind of a SIP server or with a recent update to Informacast, you can actually register the device to Informacast. So that way everything is localized with Informacast and you don't have to bother about any other additional SIP servers or, or phone systems, which just takes a little bit of the guesswork out, makes it a little bit easier since the units are already working with Informacast. And we'll go through some of the use cases for that today. And either option you use, either registering through a dedicated SIP server or through Informacast, you're gonna be utilizing a very important feature of Informacast called Dialcast. So let's talk about Cisco Call Manager and Informacast. This is the reliable practice option. You know, everybody's been using this, you know, basically since it came out. So this is, you know, the way that most people have gone about doing it. And, you know, frankly, not to say that, you know, SIP via Informacast is how I'll refer to it, is a bad way to do it, but everybody's been doing it this long. They've ironed out any kinks in between Cisco Call Manager and Informacast. If you want a, if you want a way to register a SIP device and trigger notifications through Informacast, Cisco Call Manager is really takes all the guesswork out of it. It's a little bit more complicated of a setup, but it's really practice. All the uh, all the issues are ironed out. You know, this is the seasoned true option. You know, just like when you get you know certain en you know certain engines for cars that they've been making a certain straight six Ford for literally like sixty years because that thing just works. You know, they've worked all the kinks out of it. And when something is that reliable and seasoned, it's just a good, really reliable option that you can use. So for this type of a scenario, the device will actually register with Cisco Call Manager and will interact directly with Cisco Call Manager. And the way that calls can actually go over to Informacast is you'll create basically like a trunk for frankly, lack of a better term. It's kind of what it's referred to. It is a trunk, you know, per se, air quotes. It's not, you know, the same kind of trunk that you would think when you're dealing with like SIP trunking, say calling from, you know, your SIP, your SIP system to another location or through a POTS line. Not that kind of a trunk, but for lack of a better term, there's a trunk in between Cisco Call Manager and Informacast. It's kind of the industry standard term for it. Don't really get too into the minutia. Oh, it's not this kind of trunk, it's that kind of trunk. Really doesn't matter. It's an air quote trunk between the two. And that utilizes dial cast. So, you know, when a particular number is dialed from one of our devices or any SIP device, you can route that call with a, rep, with a route partition through a trunk to Informacast. And Informacast uses dial cast to determine, okay, this number was called, that means I need to play this message to this message group. And those types of messages that can actually be triggered is what they'll call an ad hoc page, which is what we call in kind of the cyber data realm, a live page where whatever you say through the microphone will come out through the speakers in a live sense. That's kind of ad hoc. 
or, you know, kind of an add on just, you know, that kind of just live paging um, or it can trigger a stored message. So that would be something kind of similar to say what we call our stored message capability and things like our speakers or paging amp or our paging server um, where you can go and you press, you know, one through nine for stored message. You're, bas you're essentially doing a very similar thing with Informicast, but you've just got a lot more messages that you can potentially um, hold in there. And it's all just going to be handled by that particular number that our devices dial. So say, for example, you could set up a call button that dials 9123. Cisco call manager knows that the prefix 9 means that it has to go through the trunk to Informicast, and then Informicast sees, oh, I got a call for extension 123. Bang, that means I need to send out this emergency notification as an all page. So you get that kind of cool capability through Cisco Call Manager. It is a little bit more just because you're dealing with Cisco Call Manager. Setup is a little bit more complicated just because it's Cisco, but it's well seasoned. Everybody knows how to do it. You know, if somebody's got a Cisco platform, it's really easy to set up one of our devices and then set up a trunk to communicate back and forth between Cisco Call Manager and Informicast. So next, the other option would be SIP registration via Informicast, what we commonly refer to as SIP via Informicast. And that was introduced with version 12.1.1 of Informicast, and they added SIP support, which was a really cool, awesome thing that they added. Because before that, the only option in, you know, say version 11 something was to register with Cisco Call Manager because they didn't have Informicast Fusion back then. And you had to call through a trunk. You basically had to use what we just discussed on the last slide. And that was kind of cumbersome just because you're dealing with the Cisco system. It's a little bit more complicated of a setup process. And then you also need all those fancy Cisco licenses, which aren't cheap. So having the SIP registration through Informicast really blew out some of the barriers of entry um, to using a lot of our products with Informicast and especially the SIP variants of them, because instead of needing to go out and buy all these extra bulk um, Cisco licenses to use with our devices that frankly might not get used that much. You want them for that kind of capability, but how often are people actually going to be making a um, outbound call with say one of our talkback speakers? You know, it might happen on occasion in emergency purposes, but if you're spending, you know, if that's one dedicated license that you use a couple times a year, it's not really, you're not making your money's worth out of that license anytime quick. So with the capability of SIP via Informicast, it blows out that requirement for um, actual license registra or license registrations that you would need with Cisco Call Manager. You still, of course, need a license with Informicast, but the licenses are cheaper with Informicast. So this gives you the capability to actually register products like our intercoms, our speakers, or other SIP devices directly with Informicast. And it's really cool because literally all you do, instead of having to go through like in Cisco, you create your user for a phone, then you create the phone, you create your directory number, and you link all three together, to get one of our devices to actually register with Informicast, you literally check a box for get SIP parameters from Informicast and then you reboot the unit and bang, it's registered. So it's a really, really easy process that doesn't have that kind of cumbersome Cisco architecture and Cisco design that you know, is just inherent with Cisco related products. And the main use cases that we see for SIP registration via Informicast are things like our call buttons and our intercoms, just because especially with our call buttons, the main use case that we have for a lot of our call buttons is just an under desk panic button. And all of that thing is doing is just sitting on Cisco call manager. And when it's pressed, it makes a call through a trunk to Informicast you might as well just register it with Informicast and take out that middleman of Cisco call manager. Just so that way you press the button and instead of it going through a trunk to Informicast, it just goes to Informicast and triggers that message. So it takes out that little bit of an extra step in there, it takes out you know one more potential variable, uh, failure variable that could be introduced there. And another awesome use case for it is things like our intercoms, where you can use our intercoms on Informicast as a regular speaker endpoint so they can play a notification but the actual SIP functionality is a little bit more complicated. And depending on how you're intending on using that intercom, registering them directly with Informicast is a great way to go about.
And when you're making these calls through Informacast, they can go to speakers or through a dialcast capability. And when I'm saying speakers, that is just a term that Informacast uses for basically any device that registers with Informacast. Technically, things like our SIP strobe, which does not have a speaker, is a speaker in the Informacast world, as weird as that sounds. So calls can basically just go to anything that's registered with Informacast or to one of those dialcast numbers that we talked about. And one of the main sell selling points, again, is it's just much easier to actually set up than registering with Cisco Call Manager, and it uses less licenses. So there's definitely a lot of pluses there. So next, let's just kind of cover Dialcast, the main mechanism for actually making all these calls through Informacast. And this is just a feature of Informacast, you know, like the Bell Scheduler and, you know, all the different message groups and all that. It's just a feature of Informacast that you're leveraging with either route that you go. And it's because of that, because it's the main feature, it is absolutely essential for both using Cisco Call Manager, CUCM, or SIP via Informicast to actually go and trigger these different messages. Underneath the hood, you know, there's a whole bunch of fancy stuff that happens to it. But really, all you need to know is it's just a particular number that's dialed it is linked to a message and a message recipient group. So that way, Informicast knows as soon as a call is made to this particular number, or for arbitrary purposes, one, two, three, as soon as a call goes to one, two, three, it knows exactly what message and what message group that is supposed to go to. So it makes those under desk panic buttons absolutely ideal and pairs perfectly with products like our SIP call button. So that way, when the button is pressed, it just triggers a message. It's really seamless, very easy to implement. It's a perfect use case of our products and dial cast. So now let's talk a little bit more about these use cases. So with our SIP call button, this way we're gonna actually have it register with Cisco Call Manager, and it's gonna call a dialcast group. Again, just for conversation's sake, the dialcast group is one, two, three. So when that button is pressed, that big, you know, uh, nice clicky button there on the call button, as soon as that's pressed, it dials nine, one, two, three, nine to hit the trunk for Informicast, and then that one, two, three is passed directly to Informicast. And the message that it's triggered is that it's gonna send a text message to actual desk phones that says, you know, uh, help needed in vice principal office number one. And it's also going to send a text message because that's one of the cool features of Informicast to the local security that's on campus as well as that campus um, police department officer. So you get a lot of cool capabilities and all of those messages that are gonna trigger fairly discreetly because they're just text messages that go to desk phones or literal SMS text messages to cell phones. So it's a nice discreet option and it's a perfect for an under desk um, panic button in a school scenario. You could replicate this for any kind of scenario where you would need one of our call buttons. They wouldn't have to say only be in a school, but you could use this kind of use case in just about any industry where you would need these under desk panic buttons. And again, that's kind of leveraging the actual SIP registration through Cisco Call Manager. Next, let's get to one of our intercoms. And frankly, one of our cool intercoms that looks pretty good, but doesn't move as much as it should. And this is one of our just regular indoor intercoms. Of course, the Informacast enabled variant. And this one's gonna register directly with Informacast. And the way that this thing is set up is um, it's gonna be in the boss's office. And I'm imagining, you know, it's out on a warehouse, they've got a production floor, there's guys out there working on stuff. And I've got that that image of that we've always seen in movies where you've got your worker drones on assembly lines working on different things. And you've got that big old fat cat boss that's up there in the top mezzanine looking through glass, you know, yelling down at all of his employees, work faster, make those, you know, um, gadgets and doodads faster. So he's got an intercom in his office and he can just press that front call button and it makes an ad hoc page to the group of speakers that corresponds with that warehouse and makes that easy one way announcement. No lunch break unless you finish another 200 units. So it provides that really cool, easy use case and explains a good way to use one of our intercoms out there. If you're gonna be using an intercom mainly for ad hoc paging or just paging out into an area where you don't really need that full duplex communication, it's an absolute awesome use case and you don't tie up any of those Cisco licenses so it's an awesome application of it so now that we've kind of talked about both and different use cases for each one which one's better you know which one should I choose you know it sounds like both options are pretty good 
Well, it, you know, it kind of depends, to be honest. You know, there's no simple answer that, oh, always go Cisco call manager registration. Sit via Informicast is terrible or vice versa. It's not really that simple. It really kind of depends on your application of how you're going to use the unit and, and what you have available. So a Cisco call manager, you know, it's the well-seasoned, it's the tested and true option, the tried and true option that you know you know and you really don't have to have any questions once you set everything up this thing is just going to work it's a really great option um, for actual registration and setup just because it's well tested you've got easy redundancy that's built into it there's a lot of benefits of using cisco call manager for registration but on the offhand cisco licenses are kind of expensive you know it is cisco so you're paying for that you know and it, it is that the best use case of one of those licenses you know could you get the same functionality without having to spend for that having to splurge on that expensive license and that's kind of where sipvia and formicast comes in one of the nice things for a setup and it blows frankly cisco call manager setup or just about every other platform out of the water is you literally check a box and reboot one of our units and it's registered, assuming you've done all the work to get you know SLP set up and all the network stuff that you need set up for Informicast to work. But once you've got all that done, you literally check a box, reboot the unit, and it's done. So it is by far the easiest way to set up one of our products for a platform, by far. So you know that can really be a benefit. You know, if you don't really have the time to go through the the complex setup of Cisco Call Manager, setting up all the trunks, testing it, make sure it all works. That might be a good benefit and then also if you don't really have those cisco licenses available to register one of our products with cisco call manager or you might not have the funds in the company right now everybody's being a little bit more tight with their pocketbooks over the last two years or so maybe you know it might be better to register with sip via informicast because you're getting you know a cheaper license um, as compared to doing something with cisco call manager so it really kind of depends on your situation and what you end up doing so SIP and Informicast, there's really two ways to go about it. You've got, you know, register with SIP, um, um, Cisco Call Manager to actually go and route the call through a trunk to Informicast or registering with Informicast directly. There are two paths to the, to the same point. You're always going to get from point A to point B, but you might take more of a scenic route, Cisco Call Manager, to go and set up everything nicely or take the express route of checking a box with SIP via Informicast. But but with either either option you go, you're going to get to the same point. When you press that button on the call button, it's going to trigger a message from Informicast. So there's no real way to say, you know, oh, one way is better than the other. You're both getting to the same point. Maybe one's just a little bit more scenic than the others. So the choice also kind of depends on several different instances. You know, there's a lot of things to consider when you're trying to make this choice. If you frankly even really think about it this much, you know, it's what kind of licenses do you have available as you're going through and you're trying to pick an option for this registration? You know, do you have, you know, say 20 extra Cisco licenses that you don't really need? You know, you bought a pack and you use you bought a pack of say 100 and you had 80 phones and you know 80 phones and ATAs or what have you to set up and you've got 20 licenses to play with then yeah not a big deal cuz you can't get a refund on those 20 licenses and sell them back to Cisco they're already on use on your system. You might as well use them since you've got them. You know, you might as well use them, but you might not have that. And you might have some extra Informicast licenses, and those might be cheaper. So you know, you might you might end up going for those. So a good a good thing to think about when you're trying to pick um, one of the potential options is the available licenses that you have to play with. But then you also want to think about what needs to be accomplished, and this can kind of help cement um, that earlier decision that you made from those available licenses. If you're using a call button and it's just going to be an underdesk panic button and you don't have any extra licenses to register it with Cisco Call Manager, you might just register it with Informicast. Actually, on second thought, you can't do that because they don't register with Informicast. They're not Informicast enabled. Good point. So yeah, so you have to register those through Informicast. Don't you love live demos or live uh, discussions here? This is great. This is great. But with, with, with either decision that you make as you're going through and you're trying to decide whether you do Cisco Call Manager or Informicast, you're not really losing any features of our product when you pick either option. So that's one thing that you can just have that peace of mind that if you go with Informicast capability, assuming the devices do support Informicast registration, 
you don't have those issues of, okay, if I pick this option, I'm going to lose feature X, Y, Z. But if I go with this option, I get all these features plus maybe some extras. There's nothing like that. You get all the features that come on the product. As long as the thing could make a SIP call, you're going to be able to get all that same, that same kind of capability with it. Thank you for watching this edition of CyberSchool. If you have any questions, please get in contact with our sales department. They are available by email at sales at cyberdata.net or by phone at 831-373-2601 extension 334. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this from Cyberdata.